All right, so this is lesson two. We're going to focus on the anatomical planes and introduce some nice terminology, some interesting terminology. Uh, again, you can find the information in the uh, official study guide manual. It's in 1.1. So let's introduce the anatomical position first. All right, so that's the universal position that people refer to in the medical field, okay? Um, because this provides a standard for all professionals to describe the anatomical relationship between different structures. So this is uh, the anatomical position. The person is standing up. So uh, make sure you know that you're not sitting down or lying down. You're standing up. Um, the feet are slightly apart. The head is looking forward. Okay, you're looking forward, so your head your head is facing forward. The palms are facing forward. Okay, so they're not facing in, they're not facing inward, they're facing forward. And so are your toes. Okay, your feet are also pointing forward. So that's the standard anatomical position. Um, there's a one tricky part that students often get kind of mixed up. Um, for the position, we definitely uh, we'll talk about the left side and the right side, right? This is something that kind of tricks a lot of students. So everything is based on this anatomical position, or you can uh, think of, you know, the patient that you're examining. So tell me if this is the left side, oops, I don't know what happened there, or right side, okay? So is this left or right? So I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, so again, like I said, this is based on the patient, right? So this is the patient's right side. So this is the right and this is the left. Okay, so make sure you remember that really, really well. Otherwise, you're going to get right, right and left mixed up. Okay, so again, remember it's not based on you. It's based on your, your uh, patient. It's based on the anatomical position. So now we're going to uh, introduce a set of, uh, a few set of terms. Um, they describe the body orientation and direction. So we're going to use them to describe the anatomical relationships uh, between different structures. So the first set is superior, inferior. So basically superior means above and inferior means below. So I'll give you a very simple example. Let's look at the head, uh, the head and the neck. Okay. So if I ask you to use these two terms to describe the relationship between those two structures, you would say that the head is superior to the neck, right? Because it's above the neck. And the neck is inferior to the head. All right, so that's easy enough. And next one, anterior, posterior. So basically, anterior refers to the front, and posterior refers to the back. So I have another figure right here. So this will be anterior, and that will be posterior. All right, I'm going to give you uh, an example. So let's say we have a uh, sternum because you're going to see the, the, this name later. So the sternum is the chest bone, right? So if you kind of press your chest, you can definitely feel this, uh, this bone, sternum. And all the ribs are kind of attached to, uh, not all the ribs, but some of the ribs are uh, attached to or more um, accurately articulate or form a joint uh, with the sternum. And then on the back, you also have your vertebrae bones, right? Vertebrae bones. I know it's not very, very accurate, but I'm just gonna, gonna... So that's your vertebrae. And this is sternum. So it's really just kind of to show you the, the relationship. So you can say that the sternum is anterior to the vertebrae, and the vertebrae are posterior to the sternum. Next one's medial and lateral. So medial is toward the midline, right? This is the midline, so you're toward the midline. And lateral, you're going away from the midline. So a good example, we can look at the heart and the lungs. Again, my drawing is terrible, so just uh, bear with me. So this is the heart. So you can say that the heart is medial to the lungs, and the lungs are lateral to the heart. Or you can look at the eyes and the nose, right? So the eyes are lateral to the nose and the nose is medial to the eyes. Superficial and deep. So superficial toward the body surface and deep, of course, you're going away from the surface, right? So again, uh, a very good, there's a very good example and that's going to be the skin and the muscle. 
是。So you can say that the skin is superficial to the muscles, and muscles are deep to the skin. Ventral and dorsal. So ventral refers to the belly side. Okay, so this is your belly side, and dorsal refers to the back side. So you can think of them basically the same as anterior and posterior, right? So this is the ventral side, ventral side, and this is also anterior. Okay, and then this is a posterior, and that's also your backside, so that's dorsal. All right. Okay, next one, proximal distal. So proximal near the trunk or attached end. So this is the trunk. All right. Um, the point of attachment. So usually we use these two terms to describe the structures uh, of your limbs, like your arms and your legs. And the limbs are attached to the trunk, right? So this is a point of attachment, point of attachment, point of attachment. Okay. Um, so I'll give you a quick example. So let's say we are looking at the elbow and the wrist. Okay. So you can kind of tell that the wrist is further away from the trunk or the point of attachment, right? So the wrist is distal to the elbow and the elbow is proximal to the wrist. Okay, now we're going to look at body planes. So there are three body planes. They're pretty easy to remember. Uh, you really kind of just have to get familiar with the you know, the, the words, the spelling. So the first one is sagittal plane. So the sagittal plane divides your body to left and right, okay? So these two lines represent two sagittal planes. This is a special version because it goes right in the middle. That's the mid-sagittal right here, mid-sagittal or median, okay? Because it's right in the middle, okay? Um, but you may have other sagittal planes, right? Oops, sorry, this is not straight, okay? They may not divide your body exactly in halves, but they divide your body into left and right. So that's a sagittal plane. The second one is a frontal or coronal plane. So based on the name frontal, it divides your body to front, which is anterior, and the back, which is posterior. Okay. So this is an example of frontal or coronal plane. All right. The last one is transverse or cross-sectional. So this is the only plane that runs the body runs through the body horizontally, okay? So this divides your body to superior and inferior, okay? So that's the three body planes. So uh, we're gonna practice with some questions. So this is question one. You have a few seconds to answer it. Okay, A says the mouth is anterior to the nose. All right, so this is the nose, this is the mouth. Uh, there's no way that's the correct answer, right? The mouth is below the nose. So the mouth is inferior to the nose. That's a correct statement. B, the ribs are lateral to the sternum. So again, you know the sternum is about here, right? That's the breastbone. And then your ribs here. So the statement looks about right because the sternum is right in the middle and then the um, the ribs are on the side. So this seems correct. But you're let's say you're not 100% sure, it's always a good idea to go through all the options and then you can come back and decide whether this is the correct um, uh, option, correct answer. Actually, this is one of the strategies that they uh, recommend for these test takers. C, the patella is inferior to the tibia. So you might not be familiar with these bones yet, but hopefully after the skeletal system, you will know which, you know, where to find those bones. So patella, let's say this is the leg. Oops, this is really bad. Uh, let's say this is the knee. Um, this oh, super bad. Uh, this is the lower leg and this is the foot, okay? So the patella is actually your knee bone, your kneecap, okay? A lot of people just call it kneecap. So that kneecap is patella. And the tibia is this big bone on the anterior side of your lower limb. 
like if you play soccer, uh, you put a, like a guard um, to cover your tibia. Okay, so that's the tibia. So the patella is inferior to the tibia. Oh, that's definitely not right, right? Because the patella is above the tibia. So you can actually say uh, the patella is superior. Oops. Mm -mm. Hold on. Superior to the tibia. Or some people may say um, the patella is proximal to the tibia, right? Because patella is closer to the point of attachment to the trunk. So you can all also say proximal to the tibia. All right, the last one, muscles are superficial to the skin. And that's not true, right? Muscles are deeper than the skin. So muscles are deep to the skin. All right, so it doesn't look like any other options are correct. So the answer is B. Next question. All right, so like I said earlier, there's only one body plane that runs through the body horizontally, and it divides your body to superior and inferior, and that's transverse, also known as cross-sectional. Question three. Okay, so this question asks you the body, uh, the, blood, the body plane that divides your body to anterior and posterior halves. So if you remember, anterior means front, right? So uh, it's the frontal plane. But when you look at the answers, frontal is not there. So you need to look for the other name for frontal plane, which is coronal. Okay? Correct answer is B. The next topic is about body cavities. So, so far I haven't seen any questions on body cavities yet, but uh, just to be safe, I think it's a good idea to um, go through the body cavities and also kind of helps you uh, go through some of the terms, terminology that will you know, be helpful later. So you have a few body cavities. This one is called cranial cavity and you know which organ sits inside the cranial cavity, right? That's the brain. So this cavity houses the brain. And the next cavity is vertebral cavity. Vertebral. So you know your spinal cord is inside this cavity. All right. Now together they are in the category of dorsal body cavities. And now you know why, right? Because they're on the dorsal side of your body. They're on the back. All right, now we're gonna look at ventral body cavities. So these cavities are on the ventral on your belly side or the anterior side of your body. The first one is called a thoracic cavity. So this basically kind of covers your chest area, right? So you have a couple main organs in the chest in the thoracic cavity. The heart right here and your lungs, right? So you have some um, less major structures in the thoracic cavity too, but the major ones are the heart and the lungs. Okay, now you're gonna see um, some terms uh, within the thoracic cavity. We further divide it to smaller cavities. The first one is mediastinum. Okay, so based on the name, it's kind of kind of the middle part of the thoracic cavity, right? And who is in the middle part? The heart, right? So. Um, when we describe the location of the heart, we often uh, refer to it as the mediastinum. That's where you can find the heart. Um, all right, and then we have pericardial cavity. So pericardial, kind of around the heart. So there's a little cavity around the heart. Uh, it's a very, very small space. And, you know, it's uh, this, this small space between two membranes. So that's the pericardial cavity. We'll talk about this when we get to the cardiovascular system. Uh, same for the lungs. Uh, there's a cavity called the pleural cavity. So again, it's a very, very tiny space between two membranes. All right, um, the next very, very big cavity on the ventral side is the abdominal cavity. And you know you can find a lot of organs in that cavity, right? Okay, uh, now inferior to the abdominal cavity, we have a pelvic cavity. This is where usually you find the reproductive organs. Okay? So those are the, the major body cavities. So just be familiar with them. Uh, you may see you know, one question, uh, you may not see any questions. So the last topic we're gonna cover is abdominal quadrants and the regions. 
So again, I haven't really seen any questions um, about the quadrants and regions, but uh, I know some these uh, test prep books uh, do include include this section. So let's just uh, kind of cover it real quick. So the quadrants, quadrant means four, right? So this is when we divide the abdominal area into four sections. So that's the quadrants. And regions, um, it's a more defined so there are nine regions in total now since there might not be a question on this so i'm just going to go over the quadrants real quick and then you can look through the nine regions all right now another reason i want to look at the quadrants is that again this is going to reinforce your understanding of, of which side is right which side is left so the quadrant is uh, when you describe the quadrant, you're going to describe the, the right or left first. Okay, so when you look at these two quadrants, they're on the right side, right, which is your left side. Um, and then we're going to describe the um, location based on, you know, upper or lower. Okay, so this is the right upper quadrant, and then this is the right lower quadrant. So something um, special about the right upper quadrant is that most of your liver is located in this quadrant. All right. Okay, now you, you can probably uh, name the other two quadrants. So left upper and left lower. So again, the majority of the stomach is in the up, uh, left upper quadrant. Um, and then for the lower quadrants, and mostly you have the intestines. There's, uh, again, one quick note about the right to lower quadrant. So the appendix is about here. So if you have appendicitis, then the pain is going to be in the right lower quadrant. Okay, so this is a question that I use a lot in uh, AMP test. Okay, so you're going to go over the regions on your own. All right, so make sure you just kind of get familiar with the names. All right, um, if you need more information about body regions, you can go to uh, the OpenStax free textbook, page 24. Right. Um, but leave a comment if you would like me to if you would like me to go over the different regions but I think you can uh, just use the information in the textbook all right here is practice time let's practice with some questions question one okay um, actually I have extra B right there so the heart is within you are right, it's the mediastinum, right? That's uh, kind of like a subcavity within the thoracic cavity. So which organ is the cranial cav in the cranial cavity? The brain, right? And then what about posterior dorsal cavity? Remember this includes cranial cavity and vertebral cavity, right? So brain is here and your spinal cord is in the vertebral cavity. Question two. Oh, we just mentioned this, right? The spinal cord is in the vertebral cavity. Congratulations, you just completed another lesson. Good job.